Welcome to this new video on our Embedded Craft channel. In this video, we will show how to do GPIO programming and LED interfacing in Linux. We will use embedded Linux running on BeagleBone Blackboard. We will write a C program for accessing GPIO and hence LED. And we will show how to build and run C program on BeagleBone Blackboard. So, relax and watch this video till the end. Please don't forget to subscribe Embedded Craft YouTube channel. BeagleBone Blackboard is a well-known board in industry, and hobbyists and learners also use this board. This board is having SOC AM335X from Texas Instrument. AM3358 SOC having ARM Cortex A8 CPU core. It is also having a hardware floating point unit as a hardware accelerator. This TSOC has four banks for general purpose input output pins. There are 32 GPIO pins per bank. Please remember these pins are multiplexed, it means one pin serves multiple functionality. These pins are available at connectors P9 and P8. You will be able to read these names on board itself. Ground, 3.3V and 5V is also available at port P8 and P9. There are four user LEDs are available at BeagleBone Blackboard. Let us see more about GPIO. There are challenges to use GPIO on Linux. Because on standalone program GPIO registers are directly available. You can simply code like, port A equals some value. But in OS environment, for example in Linux, GPIO register is only accessible from kernel mode. GPIO is not directly addressable from user space. Question is, who is stopping accessing GPIO register or physical memory in user space? And the answer is virtual memory concept. Linux OS implements the concept of virtual memory. Actually Linux process will see virtual memory, physical memory is not visible to the process or application. Virtual memory regions are implemented through memory management unit or MMU. Memory management unit is available in Cortex-A CPU core. Actually all Cortex-A CPU processors have MMU unit. Let us see how MMU works. MMU is a translator. Right hand side is physical memory and left hand side is processes with virtual memory. Translation of virtual address to physical address is done by MMU. Process 1 Memory 0x0 zero zero address is translated by MMU, somewhere to physical memory. Similarly process 2, address 0x1000 is translated to physical memory. And you see process number 2, address is not mapped anywhere. So any request for this address, will not be translated. It will be a fault. Physical memory before use should be mapped with virtual memory regions. This mapping is done by MMAP API. You can create virtual memory in process, which will be mapped to physical memory. MMAP will map this off, physical address to this virtual address of length len, to virtual address of process. And then we can decide protection for the mapping, it could be read or write protection. Flags will decide whether this mapping will be private or shared. Let us consider an example. Suppose we want to map physical memory 0x8084, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, to memory and process. We have to call mmap API. And here is the address. This physical address will be mapped to somewhere in the address space of calling process. We are not giving address here, Linux will map to available virtual memory and process. And this is the length of the page. We provide read and write permission, and this is going to be shared memory. Now the question may be what is FD? FD is a handle to the physical memory. FD will be returned by open function to the root dev mem device. BeagleBone Blackboard has four user LEDs. As you can see here, user LED0, user LED1, user LED2, and user LED3. These LEDs are connected to GPIO pins. As we can see LED user 0 is connected to user 0. And user 0 is GPIO 1, 21. And user LED 1 is connected to GPIO 122. 
user LED2 is connected to GPIO123. User LED3 is connected to GPIO124. For this video tutorial, I will connect one LED which is here connected to pin P912. P912 actually is GPIO bank number 1, pin number 28. P91 is actually ground. In this way we can directly connect LED. Now let us see how to use GPIO in Linux from user space. We have to use sysfs file system. sysfs will export GPIO information to user space. For this we will use root, sys, class, GPIO device. You can refer to the Wikipedia page, sysfs provided by Linux kernel which exports various kernel subsystem, hardware access to user space. Let us see how to use GPIO driver. First we have to find GPIO number. For example for GPIO 1 underscore 28, multiply 1 with 32, add 28, and it is 60. So, GPIO 128 will be referred as GPIO 60. Next step will be setting direction of GPIO 60. We will write, out, to GPIO 60 direction file. To glow LED we have to write 1 to value file. Similarly in value, writing 0, will switch off LED. Basically, writing 1, to value, will glow LED. And, writing 0, to value, will switch off LED. Let us see C code for LED blinking. First we have to set direction of GPIO 60. For this, use open API to open GPIO 60 direction file in read-write mode. Use write API, to write, out, and close file. Open GPIO 60 value file in write mode. And then in loop, we will write 1 and sleep and write 0 and sleep. This block is responsible for LED blinking. Let's build and run our C program. Let us create a new project. New C project. Next. We will select cross GCC compiler. And my project name is LEDBBB. Next. Here we will select debug configuration. Next. Compiler prefix path is ARM hyphen Linux hyphen GNUEABIHF. Click on finish. We have LEDBBB project with us. We will add a C file here. Right click here, select new, my C source file, file name is main.c, and finish. Now I am going to bring my code here. You can see that, here is my code for setting direction of GPIO 60. And here is the loop, for LED blinking. Now right click, and select build. Double click on console window. Great build is complete, without any error. Now we have to run this program. We don't have any connection created here. We have to check if we are able to ping our board. Type ping 192.168.7.2 Yes, it is pinging. You can also type ping Beaglebone. Dot. Local. Good. It is also pinging. I will use Beaglebone. Local. So let us copy it. Now let us try to run our program. Right click on generated executable file. Select run as configuration. Double click on C remote application. Our connection name is LEDBBB. Project is also same. Application name is also same. Creating a new connection. Select SSH. Click OK. Connection name will be BBB underscore connection. Host name is Beaglebone.local. Username is Debian. Password is tempwd. 
and finish. We have to give remote path for our application. Click on browse. It is fetching file system on target. This is going to be our path, which is root, home, Debian. Click OK. Now, apply and run. As you can see, our program is running on actual target. As per our coding LED will blink, at 1 second interval. LED will blink for 5 times. It was so simple, not very difficult. We can also do debugging. Let me show you debugging of application, on actual target. For debugging, we will again go to our generated file. Right click on generated executable file. Select, debug as, configuration. All settings will be same as we did for running. We have to change setting at debug tab. And our debugger will be gdb multiarch. We don't need gdb command file, leave it empty. At gdb server, you can configure the port number of your choice. I will keep it as default. Apply, and debug. We have to switch to debug perspective, click on switch. Now we are at first line of main function. Let us do single stepping. Opening direction file, and writing, out, string. Opening value file. Entering into loop. Writing one in value file, and you can see LED is glowing. Sleep for one second writing 0 in value file, and now LED is off. Let me resume execution. Hope you got understanding about using GPIO in Linux. We have also shown debugging and running of Linux application. With this we are going to end this session. If you like our video, please don't forget to subscribe to Embedded Craft YouTube channel. See you in next video. Goodbye. And take care.